In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. In ancient times, the allure of a God coming down from heaven to dwell among his lowly creation was a strong one. And there is no doubt that the Gospels depict the Son of the Jewish God as being an actual human with real human flesh dwelling among his chosen people for a brief few years. But did the earliest Christians share this belief? The idea of God's visiting earth in various physical forms, including that of humans, is an old one, predating Christianity by thousands of years. But many of the gods played out their adventures in the mythical realm of heaven and could suffer pain and even death, all within the realm of the heavens. But since they were believed to be immortal, death was never a permanent thing. Here are some of the known gods of old who were believed to have died and came back to life. These gods were not human, but many were often depicted as appearing in human or animal form when beaming down to the planet's surface in order to mingle with humans. Some even impregnated human women, which sounds very similar to the story of the Jewish god coming to earth in the form of a spirit in order to impregnate a young virgin, who later would give birth to a very familiar god-man. Greek culture was rife in first-century Palestine. In fact, the entire New Testament was written in Greek, not Arabic or Hebrew. Not only did Greek and Roman philosophy permeate the thinking of many pre-Christian Jews, but so did the religions of those modern civilizations. The idea that the heroic gods of Greece and Rome could have sons and that these same gods could take on the appearance of humans and even undergo death and resurrection had been seeping into the collective consciousness of those who would soon be seeing their own Son of God performing His heroic act of sacrifice in the realm of heaven. The idea of heavenly beings taking on the likeness of humans is also present in the ancient Hebrew myths. In Judges chapter 6, the angel of the Lord appears to Gideon in the shape of a man, and only after the angel leaves does Gideon recognize that it was not a man, but an angel. So, if the ancient gods could suffer pain and death in the heavenly realms, and could assume the appearance of the human form without actually becoming human, why not Jesus? But before we look at the direct evidence, we need to lay a bit of groundwork that will help support the evidence to come. Due to the belief in original sin, the early Christians believed that mankind was innately sinful, evil, and corrupt, a very filthy and temporary creature, while heaven, on the other hand, was perfect, good, and holy, incorruptible, and everlasting. Heaven was the true reality, and earth was merely an imperfect copy. This idea can also be found in the Greek philosophy of Platonism, from which the early Christians derived many of their ideas about the relationships between heaven and earth, between God and man. In his letters, Paul states that the heavens and their inhabitants are perfect and incorruptible, while earth is corruptible, its inhabitants innately sinful. Paul's view of heaven and earth was Platonic, a dualism based on the knowledge of earth and its woes. If earth was imperfect, heaven had to be perfect. If earth was corruptible, heaven had to be incorruptible. If earth's inhabitants were mortal, the denizens of heaven had to be immortal. If earth was temporary, surely heaven was eternal. And if the very flesh of mankind was sinful, then Jesus had to be, by definition, not only sinless, but separated from the sinful flesh of humanity. Here are just a few of the many passages showing the dualistic nature of the early Christian worldview. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Therefore it was necessary that the copies of the things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. 
For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. This pervasive belief among the early Christians is an important piece of the puzzle and a driving dynamic that would hinder them from believing that Jesus could ever be on earth itself, much less as a real human born of a sinful woman named Mary, which would obviously taint Jesus himself with original sin, nullifying his status as the sinless Savior of mankind.